Hello students, welcome to Akash Live. I am your mathematics faculty and today we are going to discuss down the quick solutions of All India Akash Test Series for J Advanced 2020. So this is your first paper in this particular test series. I wish that you explore a lot in this particular test series and get to learn a lot of innovative concepts in this particular test series. Okay, so let us start the solution discussion of the paper which was held on 18th of November 2018 and I will be covering the mathematics section and let us start with question number 37 that is the first question of maths part it says that let a b c d be non empty sets then the value of a union b within brackets union c intersection d within brackets whole bracket then complement is so let us apply the rule of complement a union b union c intersection d whole complement can be written as a union B complement. The complement of union which is present in the middle is intersection C intersection D complement. So now A union B complement is A complement intersection B complement intersection with C complement union D complement which we can see that it is option number A. Okay. So A complement intersection B complement intersection C complement union D complement. Therefore, if option number A is correct, option number B is wrong. Okay. Further, I can combine these three terms now. How I will write this? A complement intersection B complement intersection C complement. The first part. Then this union will come into play. Union A complement intersection B complement intersection D complement, which is option number C. And since C is correct, D has to be wrong. So the final answer for this question comes out to be option number A and option number C. Okay. So this was a very easy problem based on properties of complement of a set. Let us move on to question number 38. Question number 38 says that consider two functions fx equal to x minus box x and gx is equal to signum of ln of x square minus 2x plus a where box x represents the greatest integer function and a is a real parameter. A real parameter means a can take any real value on the real number line. Then all the four options, my dear students, are talking about the number of solutions of fx is equal to gx. You know that x minus greatest integer x can be written as fractional part x. So fx is simply fractional part x equal to gx, which is signum of ln of x square minus 2x plus a. So fractional part x, signum of ln of x square minus 2x plus a. Students very carefully if we compare the range of these two functions LHS the range is 0 to 1 and RHS the range is minus 1 0 and 1. There are three distinct integers present in the range of signum function. Now you can very easily see that only thing common possible between LHS and RHS is 0. So LHS is equal to RHS is equal to 0. This has to be 0. And signum of this quantity is 0. So this quantity has to be 0. ln of x square minus 2x plus a is 0. That means x square minus 2x plus a is equal to 1. x square minus 2x plus a is equal to 1. Which can be rearranged as x minus 1 whole square equal to 2 minus a. This is x belongs to integers. For all integers, the fractional part is 0. Okay. Now students x belongs to integer that means if I apply this condition here x minus 1 whole square is the perfect square of an integer is equal to 2 minus a. So a is a real parameter it has to revolve on the number line. That means 2 minus a is the perfect square of an integer. So the condition is 2 minus a has to be a perfect square. Perfect square of an integer that means it can take values 0 1 4 9 and so on so 2 minus a equals 0 what is the first possibility a is equal to 2 if a is equal to 2 x minus 1 whole square is 0 x is equal to 1 only one solution next possibility is a equals 1 i have two solutions for x because x minus 1 whole square will be 1 mod of x minus 1 equal to 1 so it has two solutions next value a equal to minus 2 when the right hand side is 4. Again two solutions for x. Because mod of x minus 1 will be equal to 2 there. 
again a equal to minus 7, again a equal to minus 14. For every value of a for which 2 minus a is a perfect square, after this values, we have two solutions for x. Option number a, there exists exactly one value of a for which fx equal to gx has exactly one solution. This special value is present here. That is a is equal to 2. So option number a is correct. There are infinitely many values present for which fx equal to gx has exactly two solutions. Obviously true. a equal to 1, a equal to minus 2, a equal to minus 7, a equal to minus 14, a equal to minus 23 and so on. There are infinite set of values for which this equation has two solutions. Option number b is correct. C part. If fractional part of a is non-zero, fractional part of a is non-zero means a is not an integer. If a is not an integer, 2 minus a is not an integer. That means fx equal to gx has no real solution at all because the left hand side is always the perfect square of an integer. Okay. Option number C also goes correct. There are exactly two values of a for which fx is equal to gx has exactly one solution. It is contradiction to option number a. If option number a is correct, this has to be wrong. The final answer of the question rests as option number a, option number b and option number c, a, b, c. Okay. Let us move forward to question number 39. Question number 39 says that consider the equation modulus of 2 raised to the power mod x plus 2 minus 4 is equal to a sigma of x square by 16 plus sigma of x by 4 when a is non-zero. Then again they are talking about different values of a and the number of solutions of this equation. Simply students it is fx equal to a gx. So I will analyze fx separately, gx separately and draw both of them on the same graph. For analyzing fx, that is the left hand side of this equation, I'll have to start from the graph of 2 raised to power x, then I'll go for 2 raised to power mod x, then I'll go for 2 raised to power mod of x plus 2, then I will go for 2 raised to power mod of x plus 2 minus 4, then finally I will go for 2 raised to power mod of x plus 2 minus 4 whole modulus. So 5 steps of graph transformation for the left hand side of this question. So let us get going with the graph. Here is the x, y axis. You know 2 raised to power x is an increasing graph. This is the graph of 2 power x in green color. Then 2 raised to power mod x. The positive side is retained and mirror image is taken with respect to the y axis. So this is the graph of 2 power mod x and the previous graph is blown away. Now I need 2 raised to power mod x plus 2. This graph will move 2 units to the left. Let us draw a new graph and shade away the previous graph. Now this graph has to be moved 4 units below. Let us check this particular value at x equals 0. At x equal to 0, 2 raised to power mod of x plus 2 will give me value 4. So minus 4, that means this particular value will come 4 units below and this point will be situated at origin. That is the next graph for 2 raised to power mod of x plus 2 minus 4. The previous one goes away. Now finally, I have to take this modulus. What happens now? The negative part of the graph goes up and the positive part stays as such. The final graph of this question for the left hand side is this particular graph, the negative side taken up. Okay. Let us mark some points. This particular point is minus 2 and this particular point is 4. This particular point is minus 4. This is origin. Now let us analyze sigma of x square by 16 plus sigma of x by 4. gx is equal to a times sigma of x square upon 16 plus sigma of x by 4. So first of all, we'll solve the inside sigma. Inside sigma of x by 4 can take three values depending on the values of x by 4. If x by 4 is 0, that means if x is 0, sigma of x by 4 will be 0. This will be 0. gx will be equal to 0. At x equal to 0, gx is 0. Now let us think about when x by 4 is positive. If x by 4 is positive, this is always positive because x is positive. This is also positive. This is also positive. Sigma of a positive quantity is always equal to 1. So a when x is positive. If x by 4 is negative quantity, that means x is negative quantity. This graph will be a sigma of x square by 16 minus 1. That is for x negative, a sigma of x square minus 16 divided by 16. That means the definition will break at the point where x square is equal to 16 and, and x is negative. That means x equal to minus 4. 
from minus 4 to 0, I will get minus 4, let us say minus 3. So let us take any value of x which is lying in this interval. x square minus 16 is negative, signum of negative number is negative, minus a. At x equal to minus 4, exit. At x equal to minus 4, signum of 0 is 0, so this is 0. x less than minus 4. That means minus infinity to minus 4. I will have x square minus 16 as positive. y will be equal to a. So we are going to draw this particular graph a 0 minus a 0 a on the previous page. So let us say at x equal to 4 and x equal to 0 we have the value is 0. After this the value is a. Before this the value is a. In between this and this the value is minus a. Students, depending on the value of a, I can decide how many solutions we have. Okay. For all positive values of a, equation has exactly four solutions. In this green graph, I have assumed a to be positive. So if I have assumed a to be positive, I can definitely see that I have four solutions. Where are those four solutions? First solution is over here at this point. At this point, here is the second solution. At somewhere over here, because this graph is going till infinity, this red curve will go till infinity. Okay. So for all positive values, wave, we have third solution here and fourth solution here. Option number A is definitely correct. There is no real value of A for which the equation has three solutions. If I draw the graph of A negative and I take A as minus 4, I will have one solution here because the lower line will come up these two limbs will go down, okay? At a equal to minus 4, I have exactly three solutions, minus 4, minus 2, and 0. Option number B is wrong, okay? There is exactly one value of a for which the equation has three solutions. Minimum number of solutions of the equation is 2. That happens when a is negative. So let us take a as minus 5, a as minus 6. That way, only two solutions will be there. One is this solution, one is this solution. These are two permanent solutions of this equation. Option number C is correct. Set of exhaustive values of A for which equation has four solution is 0 to infinity. The A equal to minus 1 will prove that this option is wrong. Because at A equal to minus 1, I have four solutions. Option number D is wrong. It is a very, very well made problem. A very well framed problem for graph transformations. The final answer of the question is AC. Okay. Let us move forward to question number 40. Question number 40 says that which of the following statement is are correct. We have to go through all the options. Option number A. The general solution to both the equations tan x, tan 2x, tan 3x, the product is equal to 0 and tan 3x equal to 0 are same. The first equation says that tan x into tan 2x into tan 3x equals 0. From the first part tan x equal to 0 I get x equal to n pi. From here I get x equal to n pi by 2. From here, I will get n pi by 3. The final solution will be x equal to n pi by 3 it's, itself. Okay. That is same as tan 3x equal to 0. Option number A is correct. Option number B. General solution to both the equations cos square x plus sin square x equal to 1 and secant square x equal to 1 plus tan square x are same. Firstly, these are not equations. These are identities. Mind you, cos square x plus sin square x equal to 1 is an identity which holds for all x belongs to R. Whereas 1 plus tan square x equal to secant square x holds for all real values of r excluding the odd integral multiples of pi by 2 because cos x is 0. Where n belongs to integers. That means these two identities are always true but there is a slight difference in domain. That means the general solution is not same. C part. The number of solutions of the equation secant x plus cosecant x is equal to secant x into cosecant x is c part what we are going to do convert them into sin x and cos x and remember at the same time sin x and cos x cannot be zero this will be one upon sin plus one upon cos is equal to one upon sin cos so sin x plus cos x is equal to one this happens thrice in the interval zero to two pi one value is x equal to zero other value is x equal to pi by two and the last value is x is equal to two pi x equal to zero and x equal to two pi are not in the domain of cosecant x, x is equal to pi by 2 is not in the domain of secant x. 
all the three solutions were there, all three are rejected. Option number C is wrong. Option number D, the number of solutions of the equation sin cube x plus cos cube x equal to 1 in the interval minus pi to pi is 2. Only two possibilities, sin x equal to 1 or cos x equal to 1. This gives me x equal to pi by 2, the only possibility in the interval minus pi to pi. This gives me x equal to 0, the only possibility in minus pi to pi. The answer is correct. Final answer, ad. So next up we have question number 41. A complex number z satisfies the equation. Imaginary part of z plus 2 real part of z is equal to real part of z whole square plus 2. Where imaginary z and real z represent the same corresponding things. Then we have to talk about principal argument, least principal argument, again principal argument. All the four options are about principal argument. Talking about this particular equation, if I put z is equal to x plus iota y, we know that real part of z is x and imaginary part of z is y. So what is imaginary part of z? y plus 2 real part of z x real part of z whole square x square plus 2. So the equation is y equal to x square minus 2x plus 2. A very simple quadratic equation. Let us plot the graph. It is a quadratic equation with a positive and d negative. The value is always positive. x minus 1 whole square plus 1. So the vertex is at 1 comma 1. This is the point 1 comma 1. So this is the rough graph for this particular part. Now what are they talking about? They are talking about principal value of argument of z cannot be 0 or negative. Very true. Because all the values which are lying on the green curve have their principal argument values lying either in the first quadrant which is not equal to 0 or in the second quadrant. So open 0 to pi can be said as the range of the arguments. Option number A is definitely true. Least principal value of argument Z is pi by 4. Again the question is talking about there are exactly two complex numbers whose principal argument lies between pi by 4 and pi by 2. So let us solve it with argument Z equal to pi by 4 that is the line Y equals X. Argument of Z equal to pi by 4 is the line y equal to x. Solving these two curves, I will get y equal to x equal to 1 or y equal to x equal to 2. That means there are two points, 1 comma 1 or 2 comma 2. So here is a line cutting this particular part at two different points, 1 comma 1 and 2 comma 2. This is 1 comma 1 and this is 2 comma 2. That means, let us quickly check the options. Option number B is certainly wrong because it is not the least principal value of argument Z. There will be one such value which is less than pi by 4 for which this line is tangent. Okay? So this is wrong. There are exactly two complex numbers whose principal argument lies between pi by 4 and pi by 2. Principal argument pi by 4 is red line. This y axis denotes argument as z equal to pi by 2. Mind you, there is an open circle at origin because argument of origin is not defined. There are infinitely many values. See over here. All these values have the principal argument lying between pi by 4 and pi by 2. Option number C is wrong. Okay. The sum of real parts of all the possible complex number whose argument is pi by 4 is 3. You can see that. One point is 1 comma 1, second point is 2 comma 2. Real part of z, 1 plus 2. The answer is 3. Sum is correct. The correct answer goes as option number AD. Okay, let us move on to last question of this section now. Question number 42, it is based on the concept location of roots. Consider an equation x square minus mx plus m equals 0. m is a real number. We have to check each of the options separately. So let us start with option number A. There are two integral values of m for which equation has equal roots. A given quadratic equation has equal roots if its discriminant is 0. Only one condition is there. That means b square minus 4ac is 0, m square minus 4m equals 0. Two values clearly, m equals 0 or m equals 4. Option number A is correct. B part. The least integral value of m for which both the roots are greater than 1 is 4. 
if both the roots are greater than 1, we have three conditions. D greater than or equal to 0, minus B by 2A greater than 1, and F of 1 being positive. Because the leading coefficient is already positive, and A into F of 1 has to be positive. D greater than or equal to 0 gives you M into M minus 4 greater than or equal to 0, minus B by 2A. So M by 2 greater than 1 gives you M greater than 2. F of 1 greater than 0 gives you 1 greater than 0, which is always true. So the final answer is M belongs to 4 to infinity. Taking the intersection of all the three parts, correct. The least integral value of M for which both the roots are greater than 1 is 4. The number of integral values of M for which both roots of the equation lie between minus 1 to 1. So let us solve C part. Now we have four conditions. D greater than or equal to 0. Same condition M into M minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Minus B by 2A lying between minus 1 to 1. That means M belongs to minus 2 to 2. F of 1 positive because leading coefficient is always positive. It is always true. And F of minus 1 should also be positive. F of minus 1 positive will give you the condition 1 plus M plus M. 2M plus 1 greater than 0. M greater than minus 1 by 2. Taking the intersection of all these four conditions. This is X. M belongs to R. The third condition. Minus 1 by 2. Minus 1 by 2 se bada or 2 se chota is the solution. Taking the intersection of all the four parts here, I will get the value of m lying between minus 1 by 2 open to 0 closed. They are saying the number of integral values is 2 which is wrong because there is exactly one integral value that is m equal to 0. D part says that the least integral value of m for which both roots of the equation is greater than minus 1 is 0. So both roots are greater than minus 1. First condition is d greater than or equal to 0. m into m minus 4 greater than or equal to 0 minus b by 2a greater than minus 1 so m by 2 greater than minus 1 m greater than minus 2 f of minus 1 being positive so f of minus 1 is same 2m plus 1 m greater than minus 1 by 2 the intersection of all these three parts m belongs to minus half to 0 closed union 4 to infinity okay so let us talk about option number D. The least integral value is 0. Correct. The least integral value in this particular solution set is 0. Final answer A, B, D. Again, a lengthy problem but a very conceptual and a very simple problem because this concept is very logical. Okay. So let us move on to the next section of this paper that contains integer type problems. Mm -hmm.